The biotech industry keeps promising us a genetic revolution is just around the corner. Everything from enhanced human capabilities to dramatically extended lifespans is supposedly just a few years away. For years, I've been explaining why these claims grossly oversell what's actually possible with genetic engineering, and now a new study in Nature reveals yet another fundamental problem, one that perfectly demonstrates why we're nowhere near the genetic revolution everyone keeps promising. Hey, I'm Dr. Zane Hakim, board certified internal medicine and founder of River Rock Medical Clinic. I'm making this video to help you understand real genetic science on a deeper level so you don't get taken in by hype. As a physician, I've always been skeptical of grandiose claims about genetic manipulation, but this study revealed risks that I hadn't even considered, risks that highlight just how little we truly understand about genetic modification. Before diving into the research, let me provide some crucial context. Every cell in your body actually contains two distinct genomes, two separate sets of DNA. The first and largest is your nuclear genome, located in the nucleus of your cells. This is what most people think of when they think about genetics. It's the DNA you inherit from both your mother and your father, containing roughly 20,000 genes that guide most of your cellular functions. But there's a second genome in your cells, the mitochondrial genome, or mtDNA. This smaller genome exists inside your mitochondria, the cellular structures often called the powerhouse of the cell because they produce most of your cellular energy. Unlike nuclear DNA, you inherit mitochondrial DNA only from your mother. This is because when a sperm fertilizes an egg, its mitochondria are typically destroyed, leaving only the mother's mitochondria to pass on to the next generation. These two genomes are normally kept separate by cellular membranes, and for decades, scientists believed that any mixing between them happened only on evolutionary timescales. These natural transfers created what scientists called NUMPs, nuclear mitochondrial DNA segments, and they're actually quite common in our genome. The human genome contains hundreds of these NUMPs, accumulated over evolutionary time. But here's where it gets interesting. This new research reveals that numps don't just form over evolutionary timescales, they can form rapidly under certain conditions, specifically when cells are under stress, when mitochondria are damaged, or most concerningly, when we perform genetic editing. Let me quote directly from the study. Physiological and pathological mitochondrial stresses that promote the production of reactive oxygen species damage mtDNA and facilitate the release of fragmented mtDNA. Even more alarming is the frequency of these events. The researchers found that de novo numpts were detected in approximately 1 per 104 births and 103 cancers. But here's the crucial part. These numbers increase significantly when we perform genetic editing. The study shows that both nuclear and mitochondrial editing can cause this DNA transfer, and it happens in various cell types. Human cell lines, primary T cells, and even mouse embryos. As they state, our study reveals previously unknown risks of genome editing that both nuclear and mitochondrial editing cause discernible transfer of mtDNA segments into the nuclear genome. The implications are serious, particularly for cancer development. The researchers found that numps in tumor cells tend to be embedded in the gene-rich regions of nuclear DNA, suggesting that they may be a causative integration for certain tumors. This isn't just a theoretical risk. They found concrete evidence of these integrations disrupting normal gene function. What's particularly concerning is how this relates to current genetic therapies. Take CRISPR, for example. This is the revolutionary gene editing tool that many claim will transform medicine. What this study found is that when we use CRISPR to edit genes, we can inadvertently cause mitochondrial DNA to integrate into the nuclear genome at the editing site, and this happens at a significant rate, between one in every thousand to one in every hundred thousand edited cells. Now, you might think those odds sound low, but consider this. In some genetic therapies, like CAR T-cell therapy for cancer, we're introducing billions of edited cells into patients. At those numbers, even a low rate of problematic DNA integration becomes a significant problem. Even more troubling is that this isn't just a problem with CRISPR. The researchers found similar issues with other genetic editing tools, including what are called high-fidelity variants that were specifically designed to be more accurate and safer. As they state explicitly, high-fidelity Cas9 variants are unable 
to eliminate the transfer of empty DNA to nuclear DNA. This discovery reveals something fundamental about genetic engineering that should give us pause, especially when we hear grandiose claims about its potential. Even when we think we understand what we're doing at a genetic level, we're often discovering new complexities and risks that we never anticipated. The human genome isn't like computer code that we can just cut and paste at will. It's an incredibly complex system with layers of interaction that we're only beginning to understand. Think about what this study reveals. We've been studying genetics intensively for decades. We thought we understood how mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA interact. We believed we knew the risks of genetic engineering, and yet here we are discovering an entirely new mechanism by which our genetic manipulation can cause unintended consequences. Consequences that could potentially lead to cancer or other genetic disorders. This is why, as a physician, I become deeply skeptical when I hear claims that were on the verge of using genetic engineering to extend human lifespan or enhance human capabilities. The reality is that we're still struggling to safely modify single genes for specific diseases. The idea that we'll soon be able to engineer complex traits like aging, which involve countless genes and biological pathways, simply isn't supported by our current understanding of genetics and molecular biology. Consider what this study tells us about the state of our knowledge. We're still discovering basic things about how our genome responds to modification. We're still finding new ways that our attempts at genetic engineering can go wrong. And these aren't minor technical details. These are fundamental aspects of our cellular biology that we didn't even know we needed to worry about until now. Yes, genetic engineering holds promise for treating specific genetic diseases, conditions where we understand the exact mutation causing the problem and can target it precisely. But the grand promises of genetic enhancement and radical life extension? Those claims ignore the vast complexity of human biology and the many unknowns we still face. The study we've discussed today does end with a potential solution. The researchers found that using certain enzymes called TREX1 and TREX2 might help reduce the risk of mitochondrial DNA integration during genetic editing. But even this finding underscores my main point. Every solution we find seems to reveal new complexities we need to address. As a physician, I'm excited about the legitimate potential of genetic engineering for treating specific genetic diseases. We're making real progress in conditions like sickle cell disease and certain forms of inherited blindness where we understand the precise genetic changes needed. But these are targeted interventions for specific conditions, not wholesale genetic enhancement. The human genome is the product of billions of years of evolution. It's a delicately balanced system where even small changes can have far-reaching consequences. The idea that we'll soon be able to casually reprogram it to extend lifespan or enhance human capabilities dramatically oversimplifies the incredible complexity we're dealing with. So let's maintain our enthusiasm for the real potential of genetic medicine while keeping a healthy skepticism about grandiose claims. The future of genetic engineering lies not in radical enhancement or life extension, but in carefully targeted treatments for specific genetic conditions. And even those treatments will require careful study, rigorous testing, and an honest acknowledgement of the risks and limitations we face. Because in the end, the most dangerous thing isn't what we don't know about genetics. It's thinking we know more than we actually do. If you like this video and want to see more of this content, hit like and subscribe and join our community.